it's absolutely no dispute that the dudes of the darker pigment definitely have a genetic proclivity to have larger muscles. We don't do that here. On or off drugs, all we need to do is look at the top 10 Mr. Olympians and see out of all of those dudes, you know, it's <laughs> it is a pretty clear commonality. And in natural Mr. Olympia, even, we have the darker pigment homies beating that shit up too. But here's the thing, you and I both can differentiate between a natural dude and a non-natural dude. Maybe we can't because it's 2024 and everyone's a he, she, them. What a fucking nick. But I think we're all pretty based at learning how to interpret people's physiques. Not natural or uh, <laughs> natural, right? Like there's a big difference between Alex Eubank and Ronnie Coleman, for example, right? Like that's pretty easy to differentiate. Of course, there is a little bit harder people to differentiate because they're not so crazy to think that they might be enhanced, but they're also still enhanced. So it's hard to say sometimes. Wait a minute. However, there's still a lot of people who would like to play you a fool out there. And this is where our main subject today enters named Gorilla. He's, he's 21 years old and is 275 pounds. I'm pretty sure that's French for he's on cycle. I'm pretty sure that's French for he's on. Do you see me fucking laughing, my Fucking cycle, bro. This is just, this just doesn't make sense. I don't care what anybody says. But he does claim natural. And I think a lot of us can definitely say there's something a little speculative about claiming natural when you're natty, 6'6", 275 pounds, and only 21 years old. And look, I'm no hater, bro. Like, I am all about people winning and getting the bag doing the thing they love, which is like fitness and all that good shit, right? What I'm not about is people just blatantly lying to people, right? Just blatantly lying, selling programs, telling people that, hey, what do you mean by that? You can, uh, you can do this, right, brother? You can do this. You can do this. All you gotta do is pay me 10 bucks, bro. Join my testosterone maxing group and you'll be just like, no. <laughs> That's not cool. Morally, ethically, no bueno, bro. Homie was, uh, he bulked up. 150 kilograms started cutting and got to the point at where he's at now 138 kilograms lean looking pretty fucking jacked a little bit odd here a little bit odd i honestly have a really hard time understanding how anyone could interpret this as, yeah, as natural just, i don't know that's just <laughs> And look, the guy is an honest individual. He had Greg Doucette make a video about him, and Greg very clearly said this guy is a fucking liar. There is no way he is natural. Is he covering up because if he were to wear a tank top, there would be so much muscle exploding from everywhere that everyone knows he's a fake natty. So step one in being a fake natty is to just cover up your body and say, hey, I promise I was natural. No cap. I just want to explain. Right, you guys already know I don't fuck with Greg like that, but he is pretty funny sometimes and he can call this shit out when he smells it pretty good. And <laughs> in this case, no cap. He got this guy pretty, pretty good, man. This is an accurate articulation by Greg himself. This guy, Gorilla, made a video in response and he... He tried pulling out a lot of stunts, you know, and, and just tried saying a lot of different things. And it's pretty indicative of what people thought of him because in the comments section, literally the, the top comments, this dude is as natty as The Rock and Mike O'Hearn. Blood work or nothing, bro. I would have believed if you were natty a year ago at that high best body fat, but all your size and strength after a cut as a natty and then gain muscle is simply unheard of. May as well jump on the juice and become Ronnie Coleman if you are natural. I mean, there hasn't been a person with this genetics like yours if you are are fully natural the chance of you being fully natural is close to zero he's not natty i know him personally that's what everyone says in the comment section i feel like another fake natty but it's just all hard work and eating healthy bro too many fakes and this guy is just another one of them lying and lying some more just genetics bro this guy's very based you have elite genetics your current physique and teen physique prove that but you're also on peds two things can be true at the same time the acne too bro i would agree about that it doesn't mean that we're saying this physique is bad because he got it with peds i would argue most people couldn't even accomplish the physique that this guy has with peds genetics are far better than anyone who's white i mean bro i feel like this is a really like common pattern bro like you really see let's say you got an average fucking gym my nigga and let's say all the kids like every every year there's like a new wave of teenagers starting to jump right and out of that friend group bro like let's say five of them take this shit seriously who ends up getting like the most progress in the beginning on average bro just ask yourself that question 
I don't know the answer. Just think for yourself. Yeah, like I get the whole black guy thing because I, I honestly do believe this. Like, and I'm not saying in any kind of racial loaded context. It's true. In the Olympia, in any competitive sport, really, as a strength derived or physique derived sport, you're going to see a lot of African American individuals succeed. And that is genetics. There's no doubt about that. That is what they are gifted with in a lot of senses. Longer limbs, especially bigger muscle bellies, which has been shown in data that they have more myonuclei and more muscle fibers than a Caucasian individual or male. That was done in males, not females. So I can't say the same about females. I would say that, yeah, you can be genetically gifted. And as the, the analogy you said is great because he's right. 10 friends start the gym five, maybe even less than that are going to stay out of the five that stay, maybe one is genetically gifted. But there's a big difference between genetic proclivity and having an insane physique that is almost completely unavoidably not natural. You can see from a mile away that that person's definitely on some trend bologna sandwiches, probably not trend. You get the point. I feel like it's not wrong to say that, bro. Like you take fucking, um, let's say the Mr. Olympias, bro. Phil Heath. Black. Seven time fucking Mr. Olympia. Ronnie Coleman. Black. Like eight time Mr. Olympia. Lee Haney. Black. Of course, they're hella white fucking Mr. Olympias. Oh, Black. Shit. <laughs> Bro, everything cuts off. Okay, like, right. Like, he has the point. The, the best winningest bodybuilder ever. African American. Greg just said, I've covered this before. I think he has a little bit of oddities with how he calls people's things out. He says it like it is, but also there's definitely some slight incorrectness with some of the things he comments on, like penis size and people's skin color often, and some trends I've pointed out in my videos before. There is a congruency here with the opinion that African Americans do have the best genetics in terms of muscle building. That doesn't mean they're always going to be the best at it it just means they're gifted in the direction that they can be it's like having an apoe4 variant gene allele which would predisposition you to having alzheimer's it doesn't mean you're going to have alzheimer's it just means that you have the predisposition to accumulate it or kind of like inherit it quicker than the next guy does if you live the lifestyle that would lead to that likewise if a guy who is genetically gifted in this sport was able to take this sport as seriously as another person he if genetically gifted would excel faster but that does require that person to take it as seriously as they can. If someone who is less genetically gifted, they aren't going to be dwarfed by this guy if they work harder. And at the end of the day, that is why we see such differentiation of people at the top of the top, because there is some people who work really hard. And then there's some people who just don't work hard enough and they kind of get differentiated results. If you just go to fucking West Africa in general, I swear to God, like people who are from West Africa put on muscle faster. Like you see the NBA, most likely likely to come from West Africa, bro. So that's just how it is. Let's get right into it. Now, most of you probably seen this fucking video, bro. Did not look at my progress whatsoever, bro. Hold up just a second. Let's go. Let's see if we can rewind this to the perfect spot. He flashed these so quick. I couldn't see, see what the fuck we were looking at. Video, bro. Did not look at my progress whatsoever, bro. <laughs> Too fast. Too like fast. Three fucking videos. Okay. This was him at 17. So you're telling me from 17, he was 108 kilograms. And then at 20... He got to 128 kilograms. Again, something just doesn't line up here to me, right? Like we're talking about a kid who is 17 who turned into this only a few years later. I mean, dude, come on. I don't know about, all, know this, about all this. I mean, he's definitely got an impressive physique, and it's not like I would think he's enhanced to the max. Like he's not blasting fucking gear left and right. I mean, from 17 to. <sighs> Dude, I don't know. Bicep with the twist, the nipples poking. I do see some of the gyno in this position. And so likely that's from using performance enhancing drugs, perhaps steroids and or SARMs. Well, the fucking gyno, I swear to God, I've had gyno since even before I started fucking training. I've had that shit since I was, since I was 14 years fucking old, bro. When I was higher body fat, that shit got worse. I had like full on double D fucking titties. Like I was actually sagging. Like it was, it was stupid, bro. It was fucked. The gyno's always been there, but when I make the video, you guys will actually like tell that I had gyno from in the beginning. In the beginning. So then it's like, then I ask y'all this question. If you believe that I've been taking roids for all these years, when did I start, bro? Did I start off training taking roids? Did I get gyno because I had gyno from the beginning? Like, when did I start taking roids, bro? If you say no, it's not because of that, then explain the gyno because I've had it since the fucking beginning. So, yeah, I don't know.
it's up to you to decide, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he's got a good point here. It, it, in all of a valid sense, like you, you can develop prepubertal gyno, and it, it's nothing to do with steroids. It's just a lot of meals. I think almost uh, forty some percent of meals is the statistic. Statistic that, in which they actually develop gyno. And I cover this in my Natty or Not video, actually, like how to how to specifically identify someone who's taking steroids. And one of the things I said was gyno, but you have to be careful because the prepubertal gyno can sneak up on you. These men have it and simply just never got surgery or maybe they did and they just have remnants left over but in his case i wouldn't say it's too far of a stretch to say especially at that body fat percentage which he was bulking at like there's definitely going to be some aromatization of testosterone and then conversion uh, of that testosterone obviously into estrogen and then an abundance yeah, of estrogen yeah. And in his case, it wouldn't be that far of a stretch to say that he didn't get happen from steroids. Now, I've also seen a lot of bodybuilders who have taken steroids and had prepubertal gyno, and it was there when they were younger, but it got much, much worse as they took steroids. So it was like hardly noticeable, and it scaled to a much more noticeable version. This might be something we see in the future with them, but as of right now, it's not. I would agree with him and say that there is no, like you can't conclude things based on gyno because it is such an individual variable because some people do develop a lot of I know when they're they're in their prepubescent years, but they, that doesn't mean it will be bad. Oftentimes, it's really unnoticeable. His does look pretty pretty rough, right? It does look pretty pretty bad. So it's it's an interesting factoid, I guess. There's not really much we can conclude from that. But let's let's do a little, a little... here. I have an idea. I want to look at a list of natural Mr. Olympians and compare them to this individual and see what is the difference between these people and Mr. Gorilla here. I believe Paul Kreger, pretty much not Natty verified at this point. He's pretty much not Natty verified at this point. This is when he competed. He was fat to say the least. And his muscle development was unusually big <laughs> compared to the people he competed against. Like very unusually big. A lot of people said that he was just taking stuff. A lot of people said that, and we're in congruence here. Almost no one believed he was natural. So there's more. We have tons more here. I believe Tommy Thompson was the guy I was looking for. Tommy Thompson was a natural, yes, he was this latest natural Mr. Olympia winner in 2023. Great, great representation. This is the road to the 2024 natural O, okay? This is what this guy looks like right now, okay? He's an, a natural Mr. Olympia, all right? Just understand that. This guy is a natural Mr. Olympia, okay? <laughs> Does he look like he's, I mean, come on, man. Keep in mind, by the way, keep in mind, this is a guy that's been training his entire life. He's not 20 something. He's in his 30s, I believe, if I recall correctly. He, he looks great, like don't get me wrong, but brother, he is not, he is not 275 pounds. He is not so outrageously big that you would be like, this dude is not natural. I could believe that this is a guy who put in years of work, got to a point where his physique was really good. I believe that. Like this doesn't look unbelievable to me at all. But when you compare it to Gorilla, we're talking about a kid who's just turned 21, like just turned 21. Come on, I don't know, man. So that's that's my scientific analysis. Basically, I'm a skeptic. I'm very skeptical. I would say he's probably dosing a little bit of something, a little bit of the anabolic sazul, but there's no conclusive evidence to say that that's a 100% certainty. His physique does have some natural comparisons to it. There's some things that don't necessarily look enhanced, and I could believe that maybe he just does have that sort of genetic proclivity. The other part of me is like, wow, Michael Hearn has been preaching the same thing for like 30 years now, and people still believe him and he looks insane and he's also almost 60 at this point or something the dude's archaic same thing here right i think it's just a guy preaching he's natural gaining clout and leveraging that clout in different capacities dude i, I don't know it's fucking wild what do you guys think in the comments down below let me know and if you like this video like comment and subscribe it does me a huge favor in pushing me into the algorithm which makes these videos get out to more people so they can see crazy shit that happens in this industry deuces